Good evening. Hello. My name is Miriam Baer, and I'm the Vice Dean at Brooklyn Law School, and it is my absolute pleasure to open these proceedings and welcome you to this wonderful program in this beautiful courtroom. We're going to get started in just a minute, but before I introduce you to our speakers, I want to thank two very important groups of people without whom we wouldn't have this evening. One is our admissions team, led by the great <laughs> Dean Willis Boyd, and the other is our events team, led by the great Michael Lacari, who you see right there, who keeps everything moving smoothly. I want to also welcome our wonderful faculty behind me, many of whom are here tonight, and you're going to also meet them over the next week during our Introduction to the Study of Law program. So tonight, you're going to hear from five speakers. I'm going to introduce you first to my colleague over there, Professor Yuvraj Joshi. After that, I'm going to introduce you to one of our very distinguished alumni, Erica Carter, who reminded me that I taught her many years ago in criminal law, making me feel old. She's from the class of 2015. I'm then going to talk to you about you, which is a really cool speech. I get to tell you about your profile. I'm then going to hand things off to our dean and president, David Meyer, who will address you, and then introduce you to the Honorable Ramon Reyes, also a Brooklyn Law School alum, who will ask you to recite an oath of professionalism. And then we're going to break and have a nice reception in the courthouse lobby. But before you go, before we break, we'll take a very, very cool photograph. So wait after the oath before you go. All right, before we get to all that, now that we've done all that, I'm going to tell you about my colleague, Professor Yuvraj Joshi. Professor Joshi joined us last year, uh, or a, a year ago, after our faculty was fortunate enough to attract him from the University of British Columbia. He has written a series of highly impactful articles on constitutional law and inequality, and he has already built a major following among our students in his constitutional law courses. For all these reasons, it is my great uh, honor to introduce him, and he's going to come up now and offer you some words of wisdom and advice. Thank you, Dean Meyer. Um, can you hear me okay? One in the back, good, great. Um, good evening, everybody. I'm Professor Raj Joshi, and I am delighted to welcome you to Brooklyn Law School. So now when our deans ask me to deliver these remarks, say something inspiring, some share some wisdom, on your first day as law students, I was obviously honored, uh, but also a bit apprehensive. As Dean Meyer just mentioned, uh, or Dean Baer just mentioned, you are incoming 1Ls at Brooklyn, but I'm only a rising 2L myself, <laughs> right? I joined the faculty last year and just completed my first year of teaching here. So what wisdom could I really have to share with you at this really early stage? But then I remembered a crucial piece of advice uh, that I'll share with you today, which is that I don't have to do this alone. BLS is a community, and we can lean on one another as we face new challenges. So that's exactly what I did. I reached out to some of the wisest people I know, which are my former students, and my faculty colleagues who have supported me during my time here at BLS. So I asked them two questions. First, what message would have been most helpful for them to hear on their first day as law students? And second, what advice do they have to offer to incoming Brooklyn 1Ls? I received dozens of responses. And although they varied in their focus, there were some underlying themes that I'd like to highlight. So what I share with you today is our collective wisdom, which is much better than anything I could have come up with on my own. And I put it into six messages that I hope will guide and inspire you. The first and most important thing, almost everybody wanted me to say this to you. You belong here. Now, over the next few years, you will have moments where you will doubt those three words. What am I doing here? Am I in the right place? Do I really belong here? I say this as a queer immigrant of color who grew up without parents and had to work to support my studies. Not only did I face many obstacles on my path to law school, but once I got there, I didn't immediately excel. 
it took me a minute to figure out what these law people wanted from me. And even after I figured that out, I still felt like an outsider in a profession dominated by people whose life experiences were vastly different from mine. And so I understand exactly how easy it is to question your place in law school and the legal world. But in those times of doubt, I want you to remember this. Each one of you has earned your place in this class. Your presence here is not a mistake or an accident. You absolutely belong here. Some of you might have generations of lawyers in your family, and you may be feeling the weight of that legacy. Others might be the first in your family to attend law school, and maybe you belong to communities that are not traditionally represented in the legal profession. Your experiences and perspectives are not hurdles to overcome, but gifts that you bring to our community. You were chosen to be here for who you are, and let me tell you, you do not need to check that person at the law school gate. Some of you might worry that traits like kindness or empathy could be seen as weaknesses in the legal profession. Let me assure you, these traits are not liabilities, they are strengths. They will enhance your ability to connect with clients, understand complex legal situations, and advocate effectively. The legal profession needs more of these qualities, not less. Now, law school will be different from anything you've experienced before. It's perfectly okay to feel overwhelmed, nervous, or even afraid. Acknowledge these emotions, but don't let them weigh you down. You have overcome challenges on your path here, and you will overcome the challenges ahead. So the second lesson people wanted me to share Immerse yourself without losing yourself. Law school will profoundly deepen your understanding of the world. You'll gain insights into how our society functions, how laws shape daily lives, and how the legal system impacts different communities. This knowledge is powerful. Use it wisely. Be open to different perspectives and experiences. Engage with your classmates who think differently from you. As future lawyers, it's absolutely vital to understand and empathize with diverse viewpoints. That skill will serve you well in your legal practice and in your life. Attend seminars and participate in clinics. These experiences will expose you to different areas of law and help you understand how legal principles work in the real world. But as you grow as law students, don't lose sight of who you are and why you came here. Whether you're here because you care about justice, want to help others, or any other reason, keep that motivation close to your heart. Third, build community. Law school is all about finding your people. Whether it's in classes, affinity groups, or the many, many student orgs we have here at BLS. This isn't just about finding academic support, although that's crucial. It's about creating a network of peers who understand what you're going through. These groups will help you feel less alone, provide emotional support, and lead to lasting friendships. Get to know your professors too. Uh, we are here to support you, not just academically, but as your champions in the legal profession. We also want to get to know you as people. So I talk to my students about things like The Bachelor. How many of you watch The Bachelor or The Bachelorette? It's a, you can raise your hands higher. <laughs> See, this is really helpful. I love knowing who my students are rooting for on Zach's season of The Bachelor in the spring, <laughs> right? And in the process, I found out one of them actually was going to be a contestant on Clayton's season. And I was so glad she dodged that bullet. <laughs> We want to get to know you as who you are, so you don't need to check your personal selves at the door. Get to know BLS staff as well. They work incredibly hard putting together events like this. They have a wealth of knowledge and can be invaluable resources to you. I'm fortunate to work with Marva Skeen, a faculty assistant who is now entering her 43rd year at Brooklyn Law School. Marva has taught me all the unwritten rules of BLS and she has lived like a totally fascinating life outside of our campus too. 
My point is that these personal connections can both make your life easier at BLS and enrich your overall law school experience, make it more enjoyable. So please get to know us and let us get to know you. Fourth, define your own path and measure of success. Now, you'll hear a lot of advice about the right way to do law school, arguably what we're doing right now. Right. While it's important to listen and learn from the experiences of others, ultimately you need to trust your instincts. What works for one person might not work for you. Experiment with different methods for studying and be patient with yourself while you figure out what works best. You'll also hear a lot of messages about what success means. Law school has its own metrics of success, grades being the most obvious. And while grades are undeniably important, they shouldn't be your only definition of success. Take time to reflect on what success means to you personally. Is it developing stronger analytical skills, becoming a better communicator, making a difference in your community through clinics or pro bono work, building a strong professional network. Your definition of success should align with your career goals and your personal values. It is so easy to fall into the trap of constantly comparing yourself with your classmates. But comparison is the thief of joy. I encourage you to focus on your own growth and progress Celebrate your improvements, celebrate your friends' success, and remember, careers are long and opportunities are plentiful. Fifth, recognize your place in the world and the law. As you study, you may sometimes feel disappointed or disenchanted by the law you encounter. Trust me, your professors have been there too. See this as a motivation for change. You're not just here to learn what the law is, but consider what it could be. As future lawyers, you'll have a special role in our legal system and our democracy. You'll have the power to shape laws, advocate for those harmed by laws, and contribute to the evolution of our legal system. Take that responsibility seriously. And finally, after all that heavy stuff, have fun. <laughs> Enjoy the journey. Yes, law school is challenging, but it can also be incredibly rewarding and even fun. You'll have moments of triumph, like when a difficult concept finally clicks, when you nail an argument in moot court, or when you help a real client with their problems in a clinic. Embrace the intellectual challenge. Engage in passionate and respectful dialogue with your peers. Appreciate the brilliance of your professors and let yourself be absolutely fascinated with the complexities of the law. And don't forget to have a life outside of law school. Take care of yourselves, socialize, explore Brooklyn. I have many restaurant recommendations if anyone needs one. The friendships you form here may last a lifetime and the experiences will shape you as people, not just lawyers. So in closing, Remember that you're embarking on a profession that can have profound impacts on people's lives and on our society. Embrace that opportunity, work hard, but also take time to enjoy the process of growing and learning. You're not just studying the law. You're preparing to be its voice, its future, and its conscience. The path ahead may be challenging, but it will present incredible opportunities for impact and fulfillment. We are here to support you along the way. Welcome to Brooklyn Law School and best of luck on this next chapter in your lives. Thanks. Okay, it is now my great pleasure to introduce you to one of our distinguished alumni, Erica Carter. She graduated Brooklyn Law School in 2015 and is now the Senior Counsel in Legal and Business Affairs at Epic Games, where she supports products such as Fortnite, Rocket League, and Fall Guys, among others. 
She serves on many professional committees and boards, including the Brooklyn Law School Alumni Board and is an advisor to the Brooklyn Law School Sports and Entertainment Law Blog. Uh, we are absolutely grateful to have her with us here tonight and welcome her as she offers her perspective on the journey you're all about to take. Welcome. Thank you, Professor Baer, for the introduction. Thank you, Brooklyn Law School, for inviting me and giving me the tremendous honor to speak to all of you. Thank you to my friends, Devin, Desiree, Chris, and Catherine for supporting me. But most importantly, thank you to all of you for sharing your energy with me as you embark on this journey. Whoa, it's a little weird to be up here, I'm not gonna lie to you, because I feel like I was just sitting where you are, but I mathed, and I don't normally math, and I was there 12 years ago. But I still remember what it felt like, and it did feel, like you said, surreal, like why am I here, what have I done? And just know that that time that you're gonna spend in law school is gonna go by really fast, Again, it's been 12 years and it doesn't feel like that. You should have fun. You should experience things. You should make the most of it. Yes, you should study and try to make good grades, but the reality is we're not all gonna be at the top of our class. I wasn't. I was closer to the bottom of our class, honestly. And that's okay. Not everyone is going to be at the top, but that's not what law school is all about. And if you don't reach the pinnacle or the top, you're going to figure out other ways to go about this journey. You're all going to go through the journey differently, and we all chose Brooklyn Law School for different reasons. One of the reasons that I chose Brooklyn Law School is I came on a visit in July of 2012, which, yes, that's a little late to choose a law school since you start in August, but alas, my journey is different. And I met my tour guide who helped me get from J Street Metro Tech because I was lost and 30 minutes late. And he was so kind, he didn't even point out that I was only a block away and I made it. Uh, and on that visit, he spoke so fondly of Brooklyn Law School. I kind of thought it was weird because he just had this deep affinity for the school and we ran into some other students along the way and they said the same thing. It almost felt scripted. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I was laughing during your speech because y'all are gonna think that we planned this, but we did not, and our speeches overlap a little bit, but that goes to the testament of Brooklyn Law School. And I find myself using a similar script now when I talk about Brooklyn Law School. It was a place that I instantly felt I belonged, and I felt at peace. It's a place where students don't sabotage each other, like you hear about other law schools, people ripping pages out of books, like I was terrified. Instead, the students support each other, they care about each other, they take care of each other. If you miss class, someone's happy to give you their notes. It's a community. See, told you, it's gonna overlap. And we're different because we're a, we're a community that starts as students and extends through being alumni. You all are now a part of this community. And unbeknownst to you, that means you accepted a duty to preserve, protect, and continue the legacy of Brooklyn Law School. Everyone sitting next to you feels like a stranger, feels like a peer, but they're gonna be the people who show up for you in the good and bad moments now and in the future. You're gonna wind up being colleagues, friends, coworkers, you might even hire each other. Someone's gonna ask someone about a referral from someone else in this room. So just remember, treat each other with respect and kindness. Because at the end of the day, people may not remember the specifics of your experiences together, but they're gonna remember how you made them feel about themselves. I tried to think of some stories to demonstrate the power and reach of this community. And I had a super hard time because I have too many stories. I had a lot of fun in law school and I continue to have fun. But I'll start with this one. I was looking for interns while I was working at Sesame Workshop, which is most well known for Sesame Street. And I asked the law school on two occasions to refer me to someone or refer them to me. And I had the pleasure of meeting two of the greatest lawyers I've ever experienced because they came from Brooklyn Law School. 
now they're stuck with me. So not only did they intern with me at Sesame, they now work with me at Epic, and everyone calls us Sesame Seeds. We're like a little pack. Uh, they don't know it, but I'm never working without them, so they're stuck. Another great story was I was on a plane, and I'm kind of chatty, and this woman was sitting next to me studying for the LSAT. And so obviously, you know, I want to see what's going on. And she starts telling me about her law school search. And I was like, oh, well, obviously, you're looking at Brooklyn Law School. She was like, no, what's that? Tell her all about Brooklyn. Give her, you know, the spill. And months later, I was speaking at Admitted Students Day, which I'm sure many of you went to, but this was years ago. And she came up to me and was like, Erica, I don't know if you remember me, but I met you on a plane. You told me about Brooklyn Law School. And now I'm here. Thank you. You changed my life gets better. I was at a wedding in Seattle, and guess who else was there because we had mutual friends. This community is wild, y'all. I'm telling you. It's deep. You never know who you're going to run into. You never know where. My last story is I was on a beach in Mykonos. I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. And I was with my best friend who I also met at Brooklyn Law School, and we're vibing. We're enjoying it. Couple sitting behind us, like not near us, like close enough that we could speak. We start chatting, why is one of them a Brooklyn Law alum? Like, we are all the way across in Greece, wild. Their son happens to be a Brooklyn Law School student. I'm now his mentor because he yet loves video game law. It was just meant to be. This is what I'm telling you about our community. What are the odds? Apparently quite high. <laughs> Apparently quite high. So I urge you to be an active participant in this community starting now and continuing. Come back to the law school. Give back to the law school. That's why I'm here. It's important and we nurture each other. This is what the community is about. While you're all going to be doing this journey in different ways and forging your own paths, the one commonality is you cannot do it alone. You're going to need mentors, friends, guides, someone in the room to promote you if you're not there. Some of you are full-time, some of you are part-time, LLMs, transfer students, maybe there's another designation I'm missing, I hope not, and some of you came from undergrad. Some of you took gap time off in between like I did. Some of you are starting your second career. You're going to get cookie cutter advice, but you're all doing different things and taking different paths. Don't let the cookie cutter advice dissuade you if it doesn't fit your narrative. For me, I knew early on law firms were not for me, just not my vibe. And I kept being told, you have to go to a law firm. You have to train at a law firm. You have to do it this way. Wasn't going to work for me. So I was patient. I figured it out. I went straight in-house. So did seven other of my friends from Brooklyn at the year I graduated. Probably more, but just the people I know. It takes tenacity, drive, patience, will to figure out your own path. You do not have to do it one singular route. Some of you will go to big law and make big bucks. Some of you won't, and some of you won't want to, and that's fine. Some of you will become judges. Some of you won't even practice law traditionally. Some of you will work in public interest. The great thing about this field is there's countless opportunities, and if you do something and decide you don't like it or it doesn't work out, pivot. Do something else. There's countless opportunities. My favorite poem is The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. I would love to share it with you. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. And be one traveler long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for the passing there, had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, and leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. Pause. You can always go back. Robert Frost was wrong, I personally think. <laughs> I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Make your journey memorable. Make it enjoyable. Learn, grow, expand your mind. You all are now a part of the fabric of Brooklyn Law School, and that is what makes Brooklyn Law School great. 
pour into your community and let us pour back into you. I can't wait to see what road you all travel and to support you along the way. Thank you. All right, now I get to tell you all about yourselves. And I think as you've already heard from the other speakers, your classmates are going to be your greatest assets here at Brooklyn Law School. And there's a lot of other great assets, and you're going to meet professors and administrators, but it's still going to be your classmates who are going to ultimately form your social and eventually your legal network. And that's a great thing, because you are among an accomplished, diverse, and inspiring group of students. And we have no doubt that you're going to enhance our profession and legal community with your dedication, your passion, and your initiative. Over 3,800 applicants from around the world were evaluated to arrive at the group we have here today. 391 students comprise the 2024 entering JD class, and that includes 353 students in our three-year program and 38 students in our four-year program. We are additionally proud to welcome eight transfer students to our 2L class and 10 LLM students foreign lawyers who will study alongside our JD students and who hail from countries such as Ecuador, Ecuador, Kosovo, and Turkey, as well as we have an exchange student this year from Germany. Welcome. In the first JD class alone, your birthplaces span five continents, 23 countries. 79 of you, 20% of the incoming class, are first-generation Americans. You speak 34 languages and dialects other than English, ranging from Azerbaijani, Burmese, Haitian Creole, Farsi, Kiswahili, and Shanghainese. You hail from 31 US states and 21 different birth countries. Prior to the start of law school, 52 of you already resided into the in the center of the universe, otherwise known as Brooklyn. <laughs> Your ages range from 21 to 54, Eight of you celebrate birthdays this week, including one lucky student whose birthday is today. <laughs> Happy birthday. We are always pleased to see students follow in the footsteps of family members who are graduates of Brooklyn Law School. Tonight, we welcome 25 such students. And with over 23,000 alumni, that is not surprising. Two of our incoming students are also fortunate enough to have family members that either teach or have taught at BLS. All of you, and you've already heard this again, but I'm happy to repeat it, are here because, yes, you belong. Our admissions team has carefully read your applications, and through reading them and getting to know you, they are certain that you are approaching this endeavor well prepared to excel academically, both in the classroom and in our clinics, simulation courses, and externships. You graduated from 154 colleges and universities, having pursued 66 different academic majors. 37 of you earned postgraduate degrees, pursuing higher education in fields such as aerospace and aeronautical engineering, creative writing, mathematics, cybersecurity, and public health. Now, you've also embarked on important intellectual endeavors. One of you uh, served in an International Visitors and Communications Fellowship in Rwanda. One had an internship at the Conference of Non-Governmental Organizations in Consultative Relationship with the United Nations in Geneva. One of you had a position researching and analyzing recently declassified CIA files relating to the agency's assassination program. One of you researched a thesis on how facial composites shape comp facial composites shape juror decision-making. Now, many of you come to Brooklyn also having already achieved career success. You've held impressive positions, such as being the infrastructure engineer and project manager for the rehabilitation of the George Washington Bridge. One of you was a pastry chef at a Michelin-starred restaurant, such as Sean George. One of you was a trader of football, or a chief trader of football strategy for a sports trading hedge fund. One of you was a highly decorated senior music producer who has produced music for Super Bowl commercials. 
And finally, one of you has been an administrative uh, coordinator of the Heart Transplant and LVAD program at NYU Langone's Health Transplant Institute. Now, you're not only professionally impressive, but you are also very talented. You are artists, thinkers, creators, and athletes. Among you today are several varsity athletes, a champion dressage equestrian, a North American Irish dance national champion, a chess expert with a 2000 plus rating, and a lead vocalist for a funk rock jazz band. One of you climbed one of Chile's most active volcanoes, and one of you even performed in front of the United Nations where Pre President Obama was in attendance. Now, many of you have also volunteered your times and effort on behalf of the public, including helping asylum seekers and refugees at the southern border. One of you founded a nonprofit organization to benefit the homeless and survivors of domestic violence in Chennai, India. You worked in a mountain ski patrol in Colorado. One of you was a firefighter with the Riverhead Fire Department. You provided translation services for Chinese-speaking patients at a major New York City hospital. Indeed, many of you have also held impressive public service and government service positions. The president of the Young Adult Council in the Queen's President Borough Office. One of you was a paralegal in the King's County District Court, uh, Attorney's Conviction Review Unit, which helped exonerate a man who was wrongfully convicted as a teenager of second degree murder. One of you was a high school special education teacher, and one of you was a public health advisor at the CDC. And finally, one of you served in the Peace Corps. We're also honored to welcome two US military veterans from the Navy and the Coast Guard, and two students who served in the Republic of Korea's Army and Marine Corps. Public service and working for the greater good have always been part of Brooklyn Law School's mission since our founding more than a century ago. And we look forward to seeing all of you apply your dedication and compassion while you are law students in your future careers as lawyers. All right, now the final point, and this means a lot to me, in addition to all these impressive accomplishments, many of you have also worked in less glamorous jobs throughout your lives, from babysitting and tutoring, to working in restaurants, to being receptionists and stock clerks. Now I can say from my personal experience, and I can assure you, those jobs are just as important and beneficial to you as the positions I just described a few minutes ago. All of the experiences you have had until now will form crucial building blocks in your legal education and eventual career as lawyers. Learning how organizations work, how to talk to people, and how to negotiate difficult situations is the bread and butter of what we do as lawyers. All of you will draw on your life experiences to shape, understand, and eventually to improve the fields of law that you are about to study. It should not surprise you to hear that we are immensely proud to have you join us at Brooklyn Law School. You're an extraordinary group of students who have traveled many different paths to arrive at this singular point tonight. If you're already wondering who is who, you'll have plenty of time to find out as you become classmates, lifelong friends, and members of our tight-knit and highly successful community. Welcome. We look forward to getting to know you over this next phase of your life. Okay, I am now going to pass the baton to our Dean and President, David Meyer. Dave joined us just one year ago from Tulane Law School where he was one of the longest serving American Law School deans. And in just one year, I and my colleagues have learned a tremendous amount working with Dave and benefiting from his perspective on legal education and how to become a good lawyer. So without further ado, let me welcome Dean Meyer so he can talk to you. Thank you very much, uh, Miriam, and uh, I'm pleased to be here with my fellow rising 2L. Uh, Professor Joshi, uh, and my first job was at Kentucky Fried Chicken. So that's something you didn't learn about me in the past year, but so it's uh, definitely, and I have benefited from that experience, as you say. Well, I am so happy to join in welcoming all of you to Brooklyn Law School. Uh, this is uh, really, a, uh, obviously, a very big day uh, in your lives, but it's a big day in our lives as well at Brooklyn Law School. 
And I, uh, I remember vividly, as, uh, as Erica mentioned of her own experience, uh, my own first day of law school orientation, though mine was some years before hers. I, but, uh, and I confess I don't remember a single thing about what the dean said that day. Remember there was a dean who spoke that day, but I don't remember uh, anything more than that. But what I do remember uh, very clearly is the way I felt. Uh, and it was a jumble of excitement and nerves uh, and uncertainty about what would come next. Uh, what I didn't know then was that the next three years would transform me, uh, just as your time at Brooklyn Law School will transform you. I truly envy you for what lies ahead. Uh, sure, as you have heard and knew already, there will be plenty of hard work, that goes with the territory. There will inevitably be, be some stress along the way. Uh, that's, that part's not great, but it's entirely manageable uh, by taking time for yourself uh, and the relationships that are most important to you. Uh, keep yourself grounded. Remember, that's job one. Law school is important, but taking care of yourself is even more important uh, than that. Uh, but way more than any of those things, uh, what lies ahead for you uh, is really the thrill of discovery. Uh, your first year of law school will reveal to you a hidden world of policy and law lurking just beneath the surface of the familiar world of everyday interactions you may now take for granted. You'll suddenly realize uh, that buying a cup of coffee at Starbucks has all of the elements of a contract. Uh, offer, acceptance, consideration, and performance. Uh, you'll see how the choices we all make uh, routinely and almost intuitively uh, every day, uh, the way we drive our car to the grocery store or the way uh, you might uh, brush past somebody onto a crowded train in the morning, uh, might be judged under the law of negligence or battery and torts uh, if someone were to get hurt. Uh, or the property rights implicated by scooping up a crumpled $10 bill from the sidewalk. Uh, beneath almost every social interaction or transaction, however mundane or profound, from a favor among friends uh, to the authority of parents over their children, uh, there is a legal principle reflecting some policy judgment about the allocation of power and entitlement. And the discovery of that background policy and that web of unseen social regulation changes the way you see the world. Uh, and beyond discovering the ways in which law and policy shape the world uh, we inhabit and the air we breathe, even literally, uh, you'll see that there is nothing fixed or foreordained about the policies we have inherited from prior generations. And you will gain the tools critical thinking in our classrooms, uh, lawyering and leadership skills in our clinics and beyond to change those laws for the better. And that is not only illuminating, it is exhilarating. So I also congratulate you for the wisdom you have shown in uh, choosing to make your journey uh, here at Brooklyn Law School. Uh, because here you do not make that transformative journey alone, as you have heard but truly as part of a community, a vibrant community that is deeply and fully invested in your success. You will be taught by faculty uh, who are at the forefront of their fields as scholars. Uh, just this morning, I'm very proud to say a, uh, a significant national ranking of scholarly impact uh, among uh, all US law schools was released. <laughs> Uh, and it ranked uh, our faculty 29th in the nation uh, for a scholarly impact. Uh, but those same faculty, uh, besides their prowess in scholarship uh, and the impact they have through their research, are also equally, equally passionate uh, as teachers and mentors uh, and are available to you both inside and outside the classroom. Uh, you will learn alongside classmates uh, who, as you have heard, are not uh, rivals or competitors, but your collaborators, collaborators, colleagues, uh, and in some cases, uh, who will be your lifelong friends. And you are studying at an institution with a proud history and distinctive mission 
of mobilizing social change. Founded nearly 125 years ago at a time when most law schools were exclusionary and focused on maintaining law's service to the established order, Brooklyn Law School defied critics uh, by opening its doors to women, people of color, and immigrants from every corner of the globe. By embracing talent and ambition uh, that others turned away, Brooklyn Law School has been a beacon of excellence and an engine of social mobility and transformation for generations of our graduates and their families. And also, of course, for the clients and communities they have gone on to serve. So I welcome you to the adventure ahead. I congratulate you on your wisdom uh, in choosing Brooklyn Law School. And I say again how proud we are to count you as Brooklyn Law students and future graduates. Uh, above all, I'm excited to see the difference you will go on to make, both as law students and then uh, in the world after you graduate. Uh, and let me say here uh, that I also look forward to getting to know you uh, better in the, the days and years ahead, and I want to uh, take this opportunity uh, to impress upon you uh, that I am always available to you uh, and, uh, and that you are always welcome to reach out to me if I can help you uh, in uh, your studies or your careers uh, and, uh, uh, and in the years ahead. Uh, well, it is now my great privilege to introduce uh, the Honorable Ramon Reyes of the Brooklyn Law School class of 1992, uh, who will lead you in taking the oath of professionalism, marking your beginning uh, today uh, as members of the legal profession. Uh, Judge Reyes was born in Brooklyn uh, and came to Brooklyn Law School after completing his undergraduate studies uh, at Cornell University uh, and later uh, went on to earn an LLM degree at NYU Law School. Apart from three years of private practice with a distinguished major law firm uh, in New York City, uh, Judge Reyes uh, has devoted his entire professional career to public service. Uh, his first job after law school uh, was as a legislative attorney for the New York City Council. Uh, he then went on to serve as a law clerk uh, here at this uh, federal district court in Brooklyn uh, for Judge David Traeger, uh, who was himself a former dean of Brooklyn Law School, uh, and then later served as an assistant U.S. attorney in Manhattan, where he rose to become deputy chief of civil appeals. In 2006, uh, Judge Reyes was appointed a United States Magistrate Judge uh, here in the Eastern District of New York. Uh, and he served in that role with distinction for 17 years, uh, rising to become President of the Magistrate Judges Association of the United States. In 2022, uh, President Biden nominated Judge Reyes to serve as a United States District Judge here in Brooklyn, uh, and he was confirmed by the Senate last fall. Uh, throughout his career, he has been devoted to Brooklyn Law School, uh, serving on our Board of Trustees as an adjunct professor uh, and as a mentor to a great many Brooklyn Law students uh, who were his clerks, externs, uh, or uh, students. Uh, so please join me in welcoming Judge Ramon Reyes. Thank you, President Meyer, for that kind introduction. <clears throat> and thank you again for inviting me to be part of convocation uh, when I take my normal vacation in the Berkshires. <laughs> um, but seriously, it's, I, am so, I am so pleased to be here. Um, over the years, I've been a part of the Brooklyn Law School family. And I use the word family rather than community, which you've heard throughout. And there's a very important reason for that I'll get to later. Um, but I've been a part of the Brooklyn Law School fami family in various capacities for a very long time as a student, a member of the Alumni Admissions Board, uh, an adjunct professor, a trustee, and I'm excited to be here this evening in this context, welcoming all of you new students to the Brooklyn Law School family, a family that has played such an important role in my life and my professional career. A few short years ago, 35 to be precise, I attended my own convocation in this very ceremonial courtroom. Students, in a very real sense, 
I once sat where you are seated now, and I once walked the same paths that you are about to walk in the few years ahead. And I guarantee you that back then I felt some of the same emotions that I'm sure some of you, or perhaps many of you, are feeling now. Certainly pride of accomplishment for being accepted into Brooklyn Law School, uh, but also anxiety and perhaps apprehension. Anxiety and apprehension about what was to come and whether I was capable of handling it. I'm here this evening to tell each and every one of you that you are up to the task. You are capable of handling it, of excelling at it, just as I was, as were the generations of Brooklyn Law School students who preceded you, despite our apprehension. That you are here this evening is proof that we know you are up to the task. You wouldn't be here if Brooklyn Law School didn't think you were up to it. We are not in the business of accepting students into the Brooklyn Law School family if we didn't believe they would succeed and indeed excel and go on to do great things. I mentioned a few times that you have been accepted into the Brooklyn Law School family and I'd like to explain why that is important. You are preceded by a host of dedicated and notable alumni, faculty, and administrators who care deeply about the success of Brooklyn Law School and its students. They care deeply about you. Just like to note a couple of, of our notable alumni that they've been mentioned already, um, people who are very important to me. Uh, picture fourth to your right, fourth from the back, uh, is David Traeger former dean of Brooklyn Law School. Um, then two uh, up from him uh, is Sterling Johnson, a member of the class of 66, who was a former New York City police officer who went on be to become a district judge, just like Judge Traeger. And then coming over to the two gentlemen seated, uh, the pictures uh, at the end of the row, Henry Bramwell, um, who was a Brooklyn Law School student, and um, I. Leo Glasser, who was a Brooklyn Law student, faculty member, and dean, and who at 100 years old is still sitting on the court. He comes into court every day uh, to do his things. And there are many of judges, many judges uh, in this court and in the Southern District of New York who were Brooklyn Law students. Um, and there are so many other people who have gone on to do great things after Brooklyn Law School. David Dinkins, who is well before your time, uh, who is the mayor of New York City. Herman Badillo, class of 54, is the former Bronx Borough President and the first Hispanic member of the Congress in the United States. A friend of mine from my class, Sean Ryan, who is a state assemblyman uh, in Buffalo, New York. I could mention dozens upon dozens of other BLS alumni in law firms, government service, leaders of industry and entertainment, champions of legal service and public interest law, but I won't. All of our alumni, which currently number 23,000, as um, Dean Baer mentioned, have mentored and hired scores of Brooklyn Law School graduates, helping those graduates fulfill their dreams of professional accomplishment. And that is the Brooklyn Law School family. For myself, I've been the beneficiary of such mentoring and support. Through the recommendations of my civil procedure professor, where is she? <laughs> Mary Ellen Fullerton, she's down there, okay. Um, uh, and my family law professor and uh, then Vice Dean Joan Wexler, I was able to secure a clerkship with David Traeger, then Dean of Brooklyn Law School. My clerkship with Judge Traeger literally changed my, the path of my professional career. I had interviewed uh, my third year at Brooklyn Law School with 15 federal judges and did not get a clerkship. And I was uh, a pretty decent student at Brooklyn Law School. Um, and I was devastated. But after I graduated and went on to work for a year through the recommendation of Professor Fullerton and uh, uh, Vice Dean Wexler, Dean Traeger gave me a shot. He gave me that clerkship. And from there, things took off for me. Uh, it was a transformational moment in my life um, and one that I will be ever grateful for. And my story is neither unique nor even unusual. 
Many Brooklyn Law School alumni will tell you similar stories about the guidance and support they've received from the Brooklyn Law School family towards fulfilling their professional goals. All you need to do is work hard and show your quality, and the Brooklyn Law School family will support you. And in turn, the Brooklyn Law School family hopes that you will support the next generations of Brooklyn Law School students that succeed you. Now, it's fitting that this convocation ceremony is being held in the ceremonial courtroom of the United States District Court for the Eastern District of New York. This courtroom is reserved for special proceedings, including investitures of new judges and naturalization ceremonies for new citizens, where we administer the oath of citizenship. When we administer that oath, and formally welcome new citizens into the United States of America, we tell them that the Constitution of the United States not only blesses them with the freedoms and protections that it has, like the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, but it also requires from them responsibilities, such as the obligation to vote and to serve on juries. Just as those new citizens take on new responsibilities, you as law students must also take on new responsibilities, responsibilities that will impact and shape your future as law students and eventually lawyers. Responsibilities such as the diligent and honest performance of your studies as a law student, to act with dignity and civility towards your adversaries, and to support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States, and to adhere to the rule of law. This is a very important step in your progression into the legal profession and one which we hope you will not take lightly. So now, on to the oath of professionalism. Please stand and repeat the oath with me. And remember, when we're done, stay seated so uh, Dean Baer can get her picture. <laughs> Let's begin. As I embark on my legal studies at Brooklyn Law School. I understand that I am beginning a profession of education and my career as a lawyer. I acknowledge the privileges and responsibilities of becoming a lawyer and accept those responsibilities now as entrusted to me by the bar, the bench, and the public. My career as a lawyer begins today. Accordingly, I pledge at all times to study diligently commit myself to honest performance on every assignment and examination, and do my utmost to uphold the highest standards of academic integrity and Brooklyn Law School's code of academic responsibility, and to conduct myself with dignity and civility, and to treat other students, staff, faculty, and members of the Brooklyn Law School community with kindness and respect, and to interact with colleagues and adversaries alike with honesty, professionalism and civility, and to embody the best ideals of the legal profession throughout my career as a student and as a lawyer. I understand that my actions reflect not only upon myself, but also on Brooklyn Law School and the entire legal profession, and I to seek opportunities to provide leadership, to serve my community, to support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States and the rule of law, and behave in ways that reflect positively on me, Brooklyn Law School, and the entire legal profession. This pledge I take freely and upon my honor. Congratulations.